Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, my team and I will be presenting our market analysis on Bangkok Lucid Medical Services, also known as BDMS. My team consists of William, Kao Wing, Hui Min, Dominic, and myself. BDMS is established in October 1969 and is carrying the largest hospital network in Thailand. The group generates the highest net profit in the Asia-Pacific region and is also ranked fifth globally in terms of market capitalization. Some of their awards include the Gold Seal approval from the US Joint Commission International as well as Asia's best healthcare company in 2019. All of these achievements, together with their team of world-class professionals, complement their vision of being the premier tertiary healthcare provider in Thailand. However, despite their strong position in the market, existing trends and key operational inefficiencies have increased the market risk for BDMS. This includes increasing trend of Thailand's aging population, as well as a rise in medical tourism. In response to this risk, we recommend the following three strategies to help BDMS remain profitable and sustainable in the long run. It will be to develop an integrated geriatric hub for the growing aging population, to leverage on existing hub and spoke model to establish additional hospitals in Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar and Vietnam, and to develop their own remote health monitoring wristband. Moving on to our SOC analysis, a strength we have identified would be its strong established presence in Thailand. With over 49 hospitals in operation and offering a full continuum of healthcare services, this has allowed BDMS to cater to a wide range of treatments for local and international patients. This gives BDMS a competitive advantage in the industry while being the preferred choice among consumers. Their purchases of advanced medical equipment and technologies have also allowed them to provide high quality medical care to their patients. As Thailand is a developing country, their resources and costs are relatively cheaper than other nations, hence allowing BDMS to offer a more affordable healthcare as well. All this contributed to BDMS' strong financial performance as they were able to generate a profit margin of 11% despite the onset of COVID-19 pandemic. However, one weakness would be its loss-making expansions. Currently, BDMS has several medical facilities which are operating in a deficit, which includes their, their wellness clinic and Bangkok International Hospital. These loss-making expansions may slow down BDMS' recovery post-COVID, which can hinder their reputation and growth as one of the leading hospitals in Southeast Asia. Another weakness would be its under-diversified operating locations that restricts the capabilities of its hardware and spoke model. Currently, BDMS have 10 heart hospitals that provide tertiary care and 34 spoke hospitals that provide primary care in Thailand. However, internationally, BDMS only has two spoke hospitals in Cambodia. This shows that BDMS is not fully maximizing the capabilities of their hardware and spoke model, which operates on a patient referral system that encompasses the region. This restricts the accessibility of international patients to BDMS healthcare services, limiting their potential to earn higher revenue from regional patient transfer and medical tourism. BDMS has several opportunities to take advantage of. Firstly, due to the aging population, there will be a potential increase in demand for elderly and palliative care. 20% of Thailand's population will be elderly by 2030 and 40% by 2040. This presents an opportunity for BDMS to focus its resources on non-communicable diseases like diabetes and heart disease, increasing revenue in the long term. Secondly, the middle income group in Thailand and the Southeast Asian region is growing, which means that more people have the spending power to pay for better private healthcare services. BDMS can take the opportunity to capture this demographic of potential customers. Thirdly, there is an increase in demand for medical tourism in Thailand. This is due to Thailand being able to provide high-quality healthcare at affordable prices. BDMS has a partnership with Ping An Health, which it can leverage on to service Chinese customers. It also has several partnerships with companies for value-added services such as transportation and visa services. Lastly, with the advancement of health technologies such as telemedicine, smart hospitals, and precision medicine, BDMS can expand its capabilities of digital tools to enhance its operations. This can help reduce costs and lead to efficient allocation of resources. Next, there are several threats BDMS may face, such as political unrest in Thailand. Thailand has been in political turmoil since 2020 and this may dampen the confidence of potential international patients from heading to Thailand for medical services. Another threat is the price ceiling implemented by the government. The intention of the price ceiling is to ensure affordability of healthcare. However, this means that profit margins and revenue will be reduced. With these reductions, BDMS may not be able to reinvest its earnings on new technologies, which may eventually lead to them losing out to their competitors, such as IHH. And finally, Thailand currently has a shortage of healthcare professionals due to the increasing demand in private hospitals. 
Thailand produces 2,500 medical professionals a year, lower than their target of 3,000. Doctors are required to work longer shifts, reducing operational efficiency. Patients also receive lesser medical attention, reducing the quality of healthcare. PDMS will have to compete with other private and public hospitals for manpower if they want to keep up with the expected demand for healthcare services. Let's now move on to the key strategic issues and recommendation. For the first strategic issues, we have identified that there is a growing trend of aging population in Thailand, Southeast Asia, and the rest of the Asia region. This growing aging population will lead to an increasing demand for healthcare, in particular geriatric care and palliative care. Furthermore, BDMS in the past few years have been focusing a lot to enhance their general hospital and their pediatric related care. Thus, there is a need for BDMS to realign their strategy, position themselves to better tackle and handle the aging population issues. We have identified that Thailand currently has a limited number of nursing care and palliative center. There is also no geriatric center and hospital in Thailand and the Greater Southeast Asia region. As such, we recommend BDMS to establish their very own BDMS geriatric center. This integrated geriatric center will provide a full continuum of healthcare services for the elderly, ranging from the preventive and early detection stage with the nursing care and elderly home, for the curative stage with the geriatric specialized hospital, and lastly on the rehabilitative stage with their palliative and nursing care. This center will be fully specialized in the elderly medicine or the geriatric medicine. The Geriatric Hub will be the first in Thailand and the Southeast Asia region. Therefore, catering for the demand for the geriatric and palliative care in Thailand and the wider Southeast Asia region, further enhancing BDMS future sustainability. Lastly, it will also give BDMS a first mover advantage as it will be the first in the region. Therefore, strengthening their position as the leader in the healthcare sectors in the region. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, BDMS has refocused its attention to its domestic customer base. While this is a good short-term strategy, rising healthcare costs and growing competition will inevitably erode the appeal of Thailand as a medical tourism hub. Therefore, it is important for BDMS to future-proof its business by looking outwards. BDMS should extend their healthcare services to CLMV. Adapting its hub and spoke strategy, new hospitals can serve as spokes for primary care pre-treatment and post-treatment services. Patients who require more intensive care can be rerouted to Bangkok. At present, there is a huge gap in CLMV healthcare infrastructure. Existing hospital based in CLMV cannot keep up with the pace at which they are growing. There is also a shortage of qualified medical professionals in the four countries. From a macroeconomics perspective, CLMV's healthcare sector has a greater investment prospect than Thailand. Prior to the pandemic, the four outperformed the developed countries in ASEAN in terms of GDP growth. To determine the profitability of this investment, we discounted the earnings from one of Laos' top private hospitals to its present value and deducted the estimated cost of opening a primary hospital in Laos. The MPV of this project would allow BDMS to generate an extra 6.2 million USD in revenue. Combined with its positive spillover effects on medical tourism, this strategy is profitable and should be accepted. The greatest challenge to this strategy is its short-term financial viability. With the exception of Vietnam, insurance penetration is very low in CLMV. CLMV has one of the lowest incomes in the world. Hence, this strategy is likely to incur loss over the first few years. Despite this, many hospital organizations such as BCH have had considerable success in expanding to CLMV thus demonstrating that this strategy is visible. The third strategy issue that we identified would be that BDMS will face a strain in manpower with the increased demands of healthcare from the aging population, middle income groups and medical tourists. Thailand is currently producing below an average amount of medical professionals each year, making hiring more difficult due to a smaller pool of talents. This will eventually put a strain on BDMS as they will be unable to fulfill staffing needs, hence unable to cope with the overwhelming patient load in the future. 
Therefore, we recommend that BDMS expand their telehealth efforts by developing a remote health monitoring wristband through their existing partnership with Title Care, a telehealth solution company. This will be an extension to their existing telemedicine application called Virtual Hospital, where it focuses on teleconsulting, remote blood tests, and medicine delivery. This allows BDMS to provide a comprehensive telehealth solution that will improve operational efficiencies and dampen the effects of staff shortage. The device will incorporate a range of features that monitors vital signs for the early detection of abnormalities that will enable timely intervention and prevention. With that, physical visits will be reduced as doctors can have access to their patients' vital signs through the device, while readmission rates for inpatients will be reduced as well as BDMS will be able to offer better quality healthcare through remote post-treatment monitoring. This reduces a great amount of manual workload for doctors and nurses as the patient load increases in the future. This also allows for them to effectively reallocate their resources for more urgent and high priority cases. The device will be targeted at our existing patient base first so that we can assess the receptiveness towards this product. In a best case scenario, the devices may gain traction from the existing patient base and spark word of mouth for BDMS. This will influence others to purchase and increase the take-up rate for this product. There's also potential to collaborate with the Thai government to alleviate existing burdens of the public healthcare system. In conclusion, we believe that the three recommendations that we propose will tackle the increased healthcare demands of the aging population, middle-income groups and medical tourists. At the same time, our recommendations will enable BDMS to improve existing patient care and earn additional revenue, thus achieving business sustainability in the long run. Thank you for listening and we will now take questions.